Okay, so this is uh, Roland TR8 drum machine, and this is this is when uh, everything starts. This is MIDI master clock. Roland sends MIDI clock to all other devices: Model D, Juno 6, Behringer MS1, Behringer TD3, Electron cycles, as well as to native instrument machine. So native instrument machine is a slave in the system. I try uh, for a half a year to uh, I try machine to be a master, but there was some issues. And finally, I just swap it for Roland. And since there, I don't have any problems. Everything is perfect thing. And uh, also, it's very easy for me to just change the the tempo, turning the tempo knob. So I'll have easy access to it each time I want to change tempo of the entire system. And there is no MIDI interface, everything is MIDI changed, so it just goes out from here, goes to machine and then every single instrument. And it works great, no issues, very basic, very simple, no extra things, just MIDI in, MIDI out or MIDI through all devices. And there is also, um, uh, you, uh, use other instruments like sequencers to sequence other instruments. I will go into details, but for the starter, Roland TR8 is the, uh, when, when everything uh, happens in the beginning. I'm not saying I start every song uh, from uh, Roland drum, but you know, uh, decide what tempo it is, when, what, whatever rhythm it is, and then this is just clogging everything another sequence so this is just um, the brain of the system you could say but uh, after a few months of experience i'm very happy with how it works no issues with clocking everything is seen and it's also very straightforward you know i i have access to tempo here i can see what's happening and i don't just know which devices is next one in the chain no issues works perfect so uh, we move on to another device and uh, I will explain how it's working. Okay, so uh, another part of the chain is uh, Model D and Juno 06. Uh, Model D doesn't have a sequencer, so I, in most cases I will use electron model cycles to, to sequence something on Model D because the, the sequencer on, on, on Electron is just the best sequencer on the market. Simply saying, uh, even uh, considering machine has um, a sequencer which is uh, less limited than the one in the Electron, is more complicated, but still uh, I prefer to use uh, Electron because it's just it's fast <laughs> and just intuitive to use it. So um, the MIDI signal goes through the electron first and then I can trigger notes. But um, like in this particular case, um, I trigger uh, notes from uh, MS1. And uh, so, The idea is I like to experiment sometimes and even considering that I can trigger MIDI notes from Electron, um, I like to use um, uh, the old school <laughs> like 70s connection via uh, CV out and gate out and by using a sequencer on TD3 or a sequencer on MS1. I'm just triggering notes from one of those instruments and just, you know, having a, a double, how to say, line playing exactly the same notes, but uh, it's just experiment, you know, uh, model D is semi-modular, so why don't use it, right? And uh, Juno, it's great, but the, the sequencer is just, just one bar, so this is that's the issue for me. Mm, uh, there's no way to polychain uh, the sequences, so you'll have to change them by a hand and considering so many instruments, it's very difficult. So many times I use actually 
machine uh, sequencer to program uh, longer sequences than just uh, just one bar. But on the other hand, I really like the, the sequencer, which is which is here. You know, it's kind of like similar to ASH one on one or original of this one, uh, old Roland sequencer. Very deep, intuitive. It's just 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 one bar, uh, 16 steps. It's it's not enough for, for me. But anyway. Uh, the, the, the Juno sounds great. I mean, uh, it's a great instrument and uh, it's clocked um, from Roland um, as the other instruments. Okay, so now we're moving to another uh, instrument, which is um, TB3, classical. Uh, replica, whatever you call it, of uh, Roland 303, then is the, another <laughs> Roland uh, replica, uh, this one and the other one we made by Behringer, fantastic instruments, absolutely great, I love it, and uh, Electron uh, model cycles, I really like because this is a FM machine and yet you can create actually amazing sounds uh, from kick drums to bass lines to the leads, synths or uh, bell like sounds. Amazing and the sequencer is also uh, the best from all of those sequencers. Uh, every single instrument except Model D has its own sequencer but the Electrons is the best one and uh, I presume I'm gonna use it to sequence uh, SH-01. I already use it to sequence Model D. Mm, I will stick with uh, 303 original sequencer. It's fun, it's uh, impossible to to program it live uh, during performance. It's the only instrument actually which doesn't allow me to to create new patterns or uh, just to use it as an instrument. <laughs> because you will have to stop it and program sound, uh, notes one by one and the tempo one by one. That's gonna kill everything. I mean, this is not... Unfortunately for uh, live performing, you have to record a sequence and then just play with it using the, the knobs, cut of filter resonance, etc. That's, that's the way to use it, the only way. With other instruments, it is unable to, you know, uh, play with the keyboard is connected to the Model D as well, so I can trigger MIDI notes using keyboard either via patches or via MIDI. And also I can play uh, Juno sounds using key, I just change the MIDI channel. Uh, so, you know, keyboard for playing more notes, but um, getting back to the system, everything is also connected via audio to the machine. And this is, I think, uh, interesting uh, because the way I use machine is very, I would say, unusual. I use it as a VST host primary, so uh, on the <laughs> next setup of the camera uh, you will see the, uh, the way I use machine uh, with the computer. So this setup in, uh, that's very important is DAWless because I don't use any DAW uh, to perform. I use machine in standalone mode. And this allows me to use it as an instrument and even more than that because the, the, I also have several uh, MIDI devices uh, programmed uh, and I use them as a MIDI mixer for the machine, for example, for volume, for, for sends, for uh, FX, uh, reverbs and delays. So uh, the machine plays a very important role. I was considering going just full hard work, but there's a few reasons I didn't do it. First reason is money, the second reason is space and, and logistic uh, and, and transportation because uh, obviously I want to move these instruments and, and play the music, um, not just sit, sit in, in, uh, in a studio. But the, the point, uh, the point is, that, you know, good, good reverbs, good delays, and you need several. Uh, will cost you as much as uh, as an analog synthesizer nowadays. So having just four of them, it's like having four extra synthesizers. I was just couldn't uh, uh, allow myself to spend so much money. 
I don't have that money in the first place. I, if I had, I, I would buy another uh, instrument, obviously. And the, another reason is the space and the room uh, and the footprint on um, on a table. It is already super crowded. It is too crowded, actually. And um, but anyway, adding another boxes uh, will just make it even more uh, uncomfortable and difficult. Plus, there's the cables and then connection and then uh, power supplies and then carrying this uh, stuff. Um, very uncomfortable. But uh, this is, I would say, a poor man's setup because I decided. Well, a machine for me is a big deal. Uh, because it is a VST format, right? And I use VST uh, format since 90s, so I, I own hundreds of plugins and I've been using them for, for uh, over 20 years. Uh, so, uh, well, <laughs> that's that's great that that device I can, you know, I just utilize the, the tools I already know how to use. So it's very convenient for me, and, and that's the, the biggest the thing I think about the machine is it's just just a host for VST. So instead of having uh, a lot of reverbs and delays and other effects, I just use machine uh, for that uh, purpose. And on the next cut, I will uh, exactly explain uh, how I do that. Okay, so this is uh, a screen from my laptop, and this window is. Uh, open all the time and this is just a mixer of, of machines so I can see the output of, of all my instruments if I'm not clipping anything uh, I use a separate MIDI control innovation actually f just for the purpose to be able to control volume of the channels and um, uh, aux there's a true sense uh, on the bottom, so the MIDI control is programmed just to to use machine um, uh, as kind of a mixer, you would say. But uh, also, machine is very useful for uh, for the pads, for example, and uh, quite often I actually utilize it for uh, for playing uh, some in different scales because it has very nice. Uh, uh, implementation of uh, using chords and scales and for simple sequencing things like you know 4 to 4 uh, but longer sequences it's really nice and also has a sampling uh, abilities and I use it um, uh, as a looper as well so for example if I play and I find a very nice phrase uh, like one two bars you know on uh, one of the synthesizer and uh, just press two buttons uh, and and I record two two bar loops and uh, that's very handy you know so machine um, it's um, it has some uh, some issues unfortunately mainly with uh, MIDI related and also with uh, audio inputs just uh, four stereo bars eight uh, mono inputs for, for the machine but anyway the way I use it uh, I think uh, it's it's just very convenient for me I didn't have to spend two thousand dollars a few thousand dollars on uh, expensive reverbs and delays I just use the one I, I have plus I use 90% uh, of the plugins I used uh, the one machine has which is uh, replicas and and the other solid bass compressors actually on a, each and every channel of instrument it's set up that way that even if I push uh, instrument a little bit too hard the compressor starts kicking in and, and I, then I avoid uh, avoid you know digital clips or clipping at all so in most cases 90% of time the compressor uh, won't kick in and uh, won't touch the, the music but when uh, the instrument is pushed uh, over uh, let's say 85-90% the compressor starts, starts kicking in and then it's just you know I set that up it's just set it and forget it I don't touch it you know I have uh, uh, this uh, compressor on each channel and this also allows me to have uh, perfect uh, sync when I record it, uh, I check the difference between uh, instrument is below zero, three, um, is, is three milliseconds. So uh, it's not even uh, you don't even have to edit it in the DAW uh, when you want to mix it later on. It's just it's just perfect, you know. So uh, machine, 
very handy in the uh, entire setup. Uh, if I want to play uh, some arpeggios on any other instruments, uh, on Juno, on MS1, um, or if I want to play notes, instead of using the one from Electron, obviously those pads are not uh, not good for, for performing, they're just good for uh, programming, that they're fine, but for performing you would rather have something with dynamics and velocity, etc. So the machine helps with that as well. Um, and like I said, sometimes a simple sequence, but longer, uh, very basic. And I use also machine, you know, because it just I just press button, record it, and I move on. It takes a few seconds. It's no menu diving, right? So I just use the the instrument. I wanna I wanna uh, on each group represent different uh, instrument. So it's very simple and straightforward, you know. A is 303, and then then is Model D, then it's Juno TR8, etc., etc. Every single instrument is represented by one group. I don't use uh, MIDI for TR8. TR8 uh, use its own sequencer. It's the best. Uh, there we go. It's the, the best to use it and as its own instrument, definitely. Um, there's no need for me to use uh, uh, external sequ If I want to make a funky, difficult half tempo, quarter, or whatever uh, sequence with drums, then uh, then Electron is, is is my savior because here doing crazy things with sequencing is absolutely perfect, perfectly suited for that. You know, uh, it's a very easy, quickly, fast, intuitive. You know, programming on this is a charm. You know. Uh, the synth engine itself is kind of like um, limited, uh, but then on the other hand, you know, limitation makes you more creative, so it's great. Okay, so this, this is the, the final, uh, final instruments, those are MIDI controllers, uh, especially this one. This one is programmed and mapped that way, that it just works like... Uh, like a mixer, so you have a volume fader, you have a sense, and then insert. It represents one instrument each of the channel. Um, additionally, I have this Behringer um, a MIDI controller, and I program replica and another uh, plugin um, using those two banks, and, and I use it a lot. You know, especially delay. You know, with feedback and modulation very handy. I use delay as an instrument so this device is mapped to the to the machine. Finally <laughs> this is ancient Behringer BCR2000 you know it is uh, chunky it's massive you know big heavy but it's uh, you know 32 encoders uh, 16 MIDI channels USB MIDI out double ports of MIDI out MIDI in it's brilliant, you know, for many things. As a MIDI controller, it's um, there is no other uh, device like this on the market. I mean, if you want to have a proper MIDI controller, you have to pay a lot of money for uh, having so much options like here, you know, with every every fader being on a different preset, uh, having a different function. So this is all uh, mapped to the machine, and this is mainly used, like I said, as a mixer. This is to uh, to serve as a, a replica delay and the other effect and this is supports me with another thing sometimes I have a distortion you need um, and then I, I operate uh, from here with knobs sometimes I, I, I'll catch the loop or sample something and I have volume or other options I mean it's very handy sometimes I just the way I work uh, I just don't touch mouse, I don't use though, um, I look on the screen only to see the levels because the machine model I have is MK2, she doesn't have um, a screen with uh, uh, information about volume, so I have this, as explained before, it's, this, is, this page is permanent.
during my work uh, this is just a mixer uh, on the machine when I can see the level of the instruments and I just have it always open when I play music or when I record it, whatever this is just information from me about uh, if some you know the, I just want to avoid clipping because uh, sometimes I multi-track everything I record all the instruments on a single track so uh, I wanted to control it and finally this screen is uh, in most cases when I uh, when I don't uh, record then I play some movies you know and uh, I can, can look at the movies and it's kind of like fun inspiration you know uh, this is under the sheltering sky even in, uh, in most cases uh, when I just perform and I don't need the recording then I play some movies and uh, it's just you know the old movies I mute them and uh, I just find inspiration sometimes it's a very good idea to actually play the movie on the screen instead of uh, looking on the, on the numbers and changing them anyway there is a screen with uh, data information about the levels of the of the instruments so um, uh, I have like uh, some information about what's going on here you know on this screen when there is no when I need to record things then I have a, a, another digital audio workstation where I actually um, multi-track all the instruments